Hey everyone! Welcome back to Catholic Girl Talk. This is the second part of our series on modesty. We're going to be talking about um, the more practical aspect, just how to really put all we learned in the first part about what modesty is into practice in this part. Um, so setting some practical guidelines for yourself that are unique to you. Yeah, so in the last video we talked a little bit about a, a total understanding of our own beauty and dignity and the fashion choices that come from modesty can be a tool for self-expression, for inviting people deeper into the mystery of the, your own person and hopefully then leading them to the person of Christ, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to talk a little bit about what sort of the practical guidelines for that are, right? We, we did say that we're not going to give you like inches and fingers, but I, I do think that with, I guess, good advice and, um, guidance, however that looks, should come up with their own hard and fast rules because we do need something to hold ourselves accountable to so we don't right. find ourselves in um, a dressing room and saying, this is probably fine. Then the <laughs> rules and or somebody told me, they were like, um, yeah, people just modestly, just like all just the same, but there's really room for creativity and there's also diversity of opinion, right? Mm -hmm. So the church doesn't give us hard and fast rules. It's something that we have to sort of decide for ourselves um, based on reason. Virtue always lies in the middle. Mm. So there's a standard between like covering so much of yourself that it's like not practical and not, it doesn't show like your true dignity mm. and then revealing too much of yourself that you don't even show, you just show an object. So, mm -hmm. so something's sort of in the middle and that's gonna differ from person to person. It's gonna depend on your body type for one person, something might be modest on them, but on another person, maybe not. And so there's a few other things that can depend on. Um, yeah, so modesty also has to do with situations, which I yeah. think we talked about a little bit in the last video. It has to do with where am I, who am I with? Me being with just a bunch of girls is going to look differently than me at the mall or at yeah. um, a amusement park, right, where I'm sort of yeah. on display for everybody. Okay. If you want people to respect your own um, guidelines, you have to respect theirs. Um, we can respect that there are differences and that not everyone has to dress the same. So we're gonna share some of what our own um, guidelines are and they are a little bit different, but for tops, I don't show cleavage. So for me, that's about mm -hmm. four fingers um, below my collarbone. Right now, I've decided on sleeveless as long as it goes right to my shoulder bone unless like an occasion calls for it like if I'm just hanging out with my girlfriends or something mm -hmm. like that um, nothing too tight or blaringly see-through it also depends piece by piece because things are made differently and whatever um, and also try to keep the level of skin shown on my back to a minimum <laughs> most of those are very similar to my own rules um, I, I do think that in my own wardrobe I have tops for different occasions right yeah. like this is the top that works well tucked into a skirt, but it doesn't work well with jeans because maybe yeah. it like doesn't go quite long enough to yeah. like yeah. for me to be comfortable to wear it with a jean that might, yeah. you know, when there's sort of a, a mid drift possibility. Um, so I think I just have like more of an awareness of that shoulders I'll expose when it's appropriate, right? Like I work at the church, so I'm never going to come to the church in a tank top, whether I'm at work or not, right? Whether I'm clocking in or not. Yeah. Um, but there may be times that I do wear one, which might be like at the beach <laughs> or, yeah. you know, with girlfriends or things like that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think our top rules are very similar to one another's. So pants, mm -hmm. anything that you can put two legs into. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so anything that is loose or has more structure, um, I'll wear or that's sort of thick. Um, but as they get sort of tighter and thinner, I tend to make my tops um, mm -hmm. cover more of my back end. For skinny jeans, I usually try to make sure that um, at least my shirt goes long enough um, in the back. For leggings, very sincerely, not just like half cover my bottom. So for me, that length is about to fingertip level if I stand up and put my hands by my side because um, that gives me enough coverage and I'm sure that however I move around um, I know I'll be covered. Um, yeah yeah and I think those are super good guidelines. So one of my rules and this is not a rule for every 20-something but for me um, 
I will wear, when I wear leggings, I will wear shorter dresses than I would wear without leggings. So like this is a dress, um, you can't see it very well now, but it's a dress that I wouldn't wear without leggings. I wouldn't wear sheer stockings with it. It just comes to a certain length that um, it's fine with leggings because leggings have sort of a, a thicker material, a more versatile um, look. I wouldn't necessarily wear a shirt with leggings. And that's not because it's not modest. For my own sense of fashion, certainly, and for my own state in life, I just, I'll wear dresses with leggings, but not necessarily shirts. Um, I think with pants, I can sort of see my life through the years when I was 16, everybody, <laughs> back in the day, when I was 16, everybody was wearing, I know, <laughs> everybody was wearing American Eagle jeans. Um, you could tell by the little, like, design they had on the back pocket. Um, but everybody was wearing those and they were super low rise jeans. So they would come about like an inch and a half under the belly button almost when they were like fully up. And so whenever you sat down, there was, there was an issue in the back. Um, so I always wore like way longer <laughs> t-shirts and like, I would always wear a cami underneath and like tuck my cami into my pants. Um, and now because that's not necessarily the fashion anymore, um, I always pick sort of more high-rise jeans and I think something that we've even talked about before is just the quality of the jean that you're buying has um, a lot to do with what you can get away with so mm -hmm. like so a good thing is if you're questioning yourself or asking like is this modest or is it not like I don't know that's sort of a red flag um, a great thing to do in that situation is ask a friend Mm -hmm. who is like an outside observer who can say, yeah, you really shouldn't wear that or... Right, right, like, right. Sometimes the practical question is, if I have, if I know I have to wear leggings and a cardigan and whatever to make right. this outfit okay, um, is it, yeah, is it practical? Am I gonna, am I gonna wear this more than four times in my life? Yeah, yeah. Also, if it has pockets, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Um, maybe you're sitting here wondering, I don't have my own modesty guidelines. How do I find modesty guidelines? Um, if I know I need to change something in my own wardrobe, um, what do I need? To, what tools do I need before I confront my closet? Right. Um, and I would say that the one of the best things to do is find a woman that you admire the way that they dress, whether that's fashion or um, modesty or whatever that looks like, and ask them if they have rules or if they have certain pieces that they enjoy or even like the top three places that they shop mm -hmm. um that has been sort of super eye-opening for me is just like a casual girly conversation of like where did you get that mm -hmm. um and that has helped sort of direct my own um desires in terms of fashion and you know what what i perceive as beautiful and sort of incorporating that into my own um outfits um has been a really beautiful thing yeah, I think for me, I've actually read a lot of um, different people, like Catholic Women's Guidelines, mm -hmm. and that has really, um, that coupled with um, what my mom has instilled in me yeah. from being a child, you know, I've been able to sort of um, formulate my own um, guidelines. Okay, so get together with your friends, make them up, um, do some research, go ask your your mentors, um, the people you admire for their modesty. Um, and have fun with it. Yeah, um, get not, good advice. Yeah, it's not meant to be like <laughs> this uh, right. this burden. Like it's something we want to do in joy and in love, and make it attractive so that other people want to come and join you too. Yeah, but it is like I think there should be a recognition of it is a choice, and it is difficult sometimes yeah. to dress this right. way. Right, you can walk into a store and find nothing, and that can be disheartening, right. especially when there are people who you know. Um, you know, maybe the, the eyes of the world say are really um, attractive and yeah. that can be a hard thing, but it is, it is good to respect other people's guidelines mm -hmm. um, and to make modesty an invitation to something deeper, right? It should never be a, um, an imposition on people. It should be an invitation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so whatever I've chosen for myself. Um, I'm not going to impose that on exactly, someone else. Exactly. Um, so I think in closing, um, I guess some wisdom that I would impart or something that has certainly been true for me is um, just be open to change, to changing yeah. your um, opinions about 
your own standards of modesty. I think in my own life, um, there have been times certainly that I was confronted in a very aggressive way about changing my modesty yeah. or, you know, something that I've um, done that rubbed somebody the wrong way. And that has never, you know, being confronted aggressively has never changed my opinion, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. or my actions. Um, but it was always those soft examples of, you know, something that somebody has worn or a way that somebody has presented why they wear something or um, why they've, they've made a change in their own lives that has made the deepest impact in my yeah. own life and, and my own um, fashion choices. So I would say um, while you live by example, uh, be open to where the Holy Spirit might be calling you deeper, right? Um, where the Holy Spirit might be calling you to make real, actual changes in your own. Okay. As we were just talking about, um, just being obedient to where the Holy Spirit is leading you in terms of your fashion and in terms of when it's time to end videos. Um, I think it's time. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, pass along to your friends, subscribe below, and God bless. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Have courage, lovely ladies. <laughs>